So what happened between Tan and Cody is something that happened to me when I was 17 and had my first time with a 26 year old. Let's talk about Cody Ko because he has absolutely blown up online in the past 24 hours. And if you don't know, he's a massive YouTuber content creator. And, and before we even start this, what? a lot of people were like, yo, why haven't you guys covered this? Oh, look at the male commentary community just to fit. I don't know this mother. I don't know none of these people involved. I don't know nothing about Tana Mojo. So this is all new to me. And honestly, whatever happens to them after this, I don't really care. Creator, podcaster, he DJs now. And the reason his name's popping up all over the place right now is there's this massive wave of pressure for him to address allegations that he had sex with Tana Mojo back when she was 17. With those allegations reportedly just kind of simmering quietly in the open for a while, but then they started making waves earlier this year when Tana mentioned it on her podcast. But really, this whole situation has blown up in the last 24 hours after D'Angelo Wallace made a video about it, and it's prompted a ton of discussion online. And we'll start with some of the claims at hand, right? So a lot of this first started getting attention last month when Tana did a live show of her podcast and said, Who's the smallest you ever had sex with? Oh my God, did no one look at me, Cody Ko. <laughs> Right, and once that clip made it to TikTok, people started doing the math, realizing that if Tana was 17, Cody would have likely been 25 at the time. With Tana herself then further clarifying the claim on her podcast later in June, saying, yeah, people did the right math. This isn't just some crazy tea. It was a crime. Yeah. I hooked up with Cody Cole when I was 17 and he was 25. When I look back at the Cody situation, it is, I definitely am like, why was he doing that? You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't associate or hold it with trauma because I am such a comparative person where I'm like, so many worse things have happened to me. And yeah. that's bad. The way it has until yesterday. D'Angelo posting a video titled An Uncomfortable Conversation About Cody Co, which racked up over a million views as of this morning. With this, you also had D'Angelo saying that it appears Gabby Hanna previously backed Tana's story. Tana saying that Gabby kind of witnessed this and tried to intervene. And D'Angelo saying that he found an old clip where she told this story. One time, I told a guy, I saw him making out with a girl at a party yeah. who was underage, and I pulled him aside and I was like, hey man, you probably don't know, I know she like looks a little older, she's underage, watch it. And he's like, oh my god, thank you for telling me. And then he f***ed her that- so <laughs> <laughs> No, the drop of that story was what? No, times. just that clip, that clip could be the drop of some UK music. <laughs> I told a guy that girl was no underage. And he said, oh, thanks for telling me. And then he fuck her that night. Hey, that, that's a crazy job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I get you. I get you. This is a serious topic. But that's a serious no. tune. That's a serious tune right that's there. That's a serious Massive people slamming Cody in his Instagram comments. And folks on Twitter are saying things like, people being okay with Cody Co hooking up with an underage Tana because it's Tana is actually disgusting and first. All right, well, I think that's pretty good. So apparently the, the place where they did it, this would be technically considered illegal. And folks are like, why won't this guy respond to these, all these? Uh, probably because, you know, if he did it, him saying he did it is not gonna make him look good. I'm saying, hey, I'm sorry I banged an underage person. It's not gonna make him look good. So at the advice of his lawyers and everybody else involved, keep your mouth shut. Some plausible deniability still exists. I um, I don't really care about the legality of the topic because I don't think that really has any merit as to whether or not it's right or wrong, right? The idea that the design behavior can happen in one state over and the person's 16 and it's legal doesn't make this any less good or bad. Sure. To me, I think legality is kind of like pointless. So everyone's like, well, it wasn't legal. That's like, sure, if they're going to press charges, I guess that has merit. But I don't think it really matters for the public discussion. People talking about the age. Look, look this is the, what I think about age gap dynamics okay i think it's a red flag when someone's involved with someone who's underage a red flag does not mean that something bad's happening it just means to take a look and it could be a reason to have extreme caution and the reason why i say that is i've grown up with a lot of people who ended up marrying their high school sweethearts or they were 18 and they were dating somebody who's 26 and they ended up getting married later for some people these kind of dynamics can work and not be problematic and then for others it can be an indication of something very bad happening i don't think in a vacuum i can look at an age dynamic and be like this is inherently bad that's for the two people involved that depends on their dynamic so for me <clears throat> when it comes to age gap stuff I think it's a case by case basis, but I don't think there's anything wrong with people being like, yikes, or people being like, take a look over here, or 
you know, I'm pretty sure if anybody had a sibling or, a, you know, a child who was 17 and they were dating someone 25, everyone would feel apprehensive and rightfully so. But as far as the legality, I just, I personally don't care. I know in some countries it goes down to 12 and I still wouldn't use that as a barometer for what I think is acceptable or not. Uh, and I also don't think it's good because it makes it sound like once you hit 18, everything is fair game. No, I think the problems that exist in the behavior between a 17 and a potential 26 year old or above can exist between an 18 and a 29 year old or a 19 and a 30 year old. These kinds of dynamics can always be a problem. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I just have a problem whenever people say the term uh, barely legal. Yeah. You know, when I hear that term, yeah. I always envision this. <laughs> just someone waiting. Staring at a clock just, or some shit? Yeah. It's got to be a cuckoo clock because they're creepy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So this is why I said I don't care about the age aspect. Well, it's not that I don't care. I don't think it's the most important aspect is... There are relationships between a 19 and 21 year old that I could find incredibly unethical. For example, this happened not long ago, but a university student um, was sleeping with their professor who was 23 and they were 19 and the professor went to jail. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Why? Not because it's two adults consenting, blah, blah. It's because of the dynamic between the two people involved. Mm. A professor who has control over your grades and everything involved should not be allowed to sleep with their students. And I think places that pass laws like that are great. Um, does that mean that a relationship dynamic between a professor and a student is always going to be bad? No. Well, right. No. But I think there's certain protections that we have to put into place to make sure that, one, schools are impartial or appear to be fair. Um, and I think the same thing for law. Like, just because a judge can't sleep with a defendant doesn't mean it shouldn't be illegal. It doesn't mean the two people can't be consenting. But there's something incredibly unethical and bad about these kinds of potential dynamics, right? I think jail is a bit much. For the teacher and the student? Oh. You go ahead. If she's 19 and you're 23, jail. It's not about the if, age. It's not about the age. They could have been 25 and she could have been 23, the teacher. I don't care. Jail? If your teacher is banging their student, I have no issue with them considering jail time. Is, is a judge and a defendant, the judge going to jail for sleeping with a defendant? Uh, I think jail, 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 jail is a bit much. Jail is a bit much. At the end of the day, when you take whatever oath you take or whatever kind of position that you take and you have a position of authority, that comes with a heightened level of responsibility. If you abuse that authority or that position, okay, let me ask you, what if the teacher says, uh, I'll fuck you for grades? I'll fuck you, I'll fuck you for free. Fuck you, for, the, the, they're banging students for grades. Go to jail? No. You lose your job. They do that. I understand. I, I, I'm, I'm saying there's teachers wait, who, wait, wait, who've wait. taken money, they've I, taken bribes. Um, I, they, hold up, they've taken bribes. Bri bribery is a form of example of that. That's bribery. You can't do that. And not go to jail. I understand that. I okay. understand that. Like I understand it's done and it's been done. Uh -huh. I don't disagree with the fact. I can't disagree with the, the fact of something has been done. Right. I'm saying I think it's a bit much. So you think you, bribery doesn't deserve jail? You could lose your job, but yeah, lose your job. While fresh and fit, just pearly things, and every other loser in the red pill space are taking L's. Again! We want you guys to get some W's with today's sponsor, Surfshark. Couple of reasons. Summer is coming. Yeah, and a lot of you like to go on vacation in the summer. That's just logical. But did you know that, according to the place that you are on the world, mm -hmm. the price of your ticket is going to vary. So if you want to be able to enjoy a rebate or a lesser amount on your fare, you change the location with a VPN changer and you're going to be able to have the best prices for your flight. If you want to surf the web in a private manner, you know, you don't want to have the unwanted people have access to your information, whether you are doing some online banking or traveling or using a Wi-Fi connection that is not secure, you're going to be able to have your information protected, encrypted, and sent so that, you know, nobody's going to have access to your information. Basically, Surfshark is going to be a bit like the security guard that's going to falcon punch all the people that are going to want to have access to your cap. I mean, to your information. Yeah, shout out to my man, Sneeko. <laughs> They're going to nut their teeth out. Yep. The wonderful thing about Surfshark is that it's unlimited devices. And it's not going to charge you one thing, one penny more. So if you click on the link below and enter coupon ABBA and PREACH, 30 day money back warranty. Get it. If it's just for grades, fine. Like, I don't care. If I'm really on the ramification of what who, what kind of student was it? What 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 was they studying for? You know what I mean? If you're giving no, if you if, so, if what, you, like a liberal arts student doesn't get nothing, but an engineer or doctor's yeah, okay. Yeah, you know 
know that other person's not gonna work in their fields. <laughs> the, Who cares? You, you can't, you but can't if, like if you're not, if you're not, if you're gonna be a doctor <laughs> and you let a motherfucker be but a then, doctor, but, but now you, are you are you are you well, now on the No, I'm still on the same level of ramification. That's but, my whole thing. But you cannot look at it that way because it ruins the public trust and the institution as a whole. It moves the accreditation of everything involved. Uh, you know, and that's why you shouldn't be working there anymore. But Jay, beyond that, know? it's not enough to just say that because if you don't make the ramification strong, it still enables people to do that. Uh, if you're just saying we're gonna fire you and you could go and work somewhere else in the country, what are we gonna do? Well, people look, people, people. There's jail and people still do. Don't that. you say there's a problem with cops? Cops get fired for bad behavior. They don't go to jail. What ends up happening? They get hired somebody else. I'm just saying there's a strong argument beyond the age aspect that the dynamic between the two parties is probably more important than just the age factor. That's what I was trying to get at. Now, I don't think your stance is crazy. You think mine is? That's okay. I don't think my stance is that crazy, but anyways. We can well, agree. the more you talk about it, the less I think it's crazy. The reason why I brought up the, the dynamics is because, like, Cody Ko at the time was an incredibly famous person through Vine, really, really well known. He was doing a lot of collabs with this 17 year old. He had a position with her where essentially he was almost like a mentor in some ways and also somebody he was collaborating with. I think when you think of that dynamic, to me, it becomes a lot more incestuous or bad because of that. I don't think the age factor in a vacuum itself makes me question right away. To me, it's more so all those things involved. And he's done this with other women. To, to my understanding, there's like proof online in regards to him having relationships with other 17 year olds or dating them before. And then I think when you see that kind of pattern, there's something to question there. Serial What you think? Not that the person that's telling the story doesn't look like she cares. She says, yeah, it was, it was not the thing to do. And I was taken advantage of, taking advantage. I, I don't know. There's something about... There's a detachment by t of, of, of how the this, this, this story is told that I'm like, did you really feel that way? Did you... But then again, all the responsibility falls on the dude. It's all the dude's fault. Yeah, but... Because he's older, it's his dude. It's, it's his fault. But to, the, to what you said about, like, she feels detached. If I, if, you mind if I chime in? First portion? Yeah. Uh, before we move on. I was going to say, some people, sometimes they go through terrible things. Yeah. It's like a grape. Or, you know, getting beat up and they just kind of walk it up. Doesn't mean that yeah, the action she, involved isn't really bad. I understand. But and she, she said something. She said something that was kind of telling. She said, I don't really feel that strongly about it because I do a lot of comparative. And I've been through so many worse, worse things. Worse mm -hmm. So, But she says it was a crime. So she acknowledged it. You know what I mean? So I understand. I just want to highlight the fact that she feels detached. Yeah. But she's like, meh. Right? But she does know that it was not good. It was not. It was not. It was not a good thing to happen. Try to acknowledge that. I don't know who people are trying to defend and why they're trying to defend. It's, it's really clear what it... What, of course, we just have one side of the story. But if we base ourselves on that side of the story, then... Yeah. Yes, me and Preach have been gone for some time because we were traveling. If you go check my Instagram, you can see all that good stuff. Uh, but also, there's a new addition to the crew. You didn't see? Yeah, I saw. What's that? That's a painting. But did you notice who's there? A super frog and sneak over and push the fuck out. <laughs> Whose man is this? <laughs> Who did that? Shout out to Turtle of Canada. Uh, for the artist in question, you can see his Instagram right now on the screen. So go give him a shout out for making this beautiful art piece. I also think that this happening, what, 2015 or 2017, whatever the fuck it was, um, also plays a part because I remember growing up most of my life, these kinds of relationships were incredibly normal. Doesn't make them good but they were very normal. Almost everyone I went to high school, especially the women, had a boyfriend already in university or in college, and nobody batted an eye. Mm. Were they underage? Sure. Did anyone care? Absolutely not. And that was normal. I'm not talking about one-offs or two-offs. I'm talking about very, very common. And it was almost akin to underage drinking. Is it illegal? Sure. Yeah. Does anyone care? Absolutely not. No. I would go to parties all the time as a high schooler and everybody was wasted out their mind. And the parents knew, everyone around you, and nobody really cared. Yo. I think this is kind of similar to that, at least when I was growing up. So I'm not saying again, but everyone bites my head off. I think it's also important to have a conversation of the kind of culture that most of us have grown up in, especially if we're above in our 30s, and how these kinds of dynamics were not abnormal back then. It's like, it was so prevalent that... Girls could even lie about it, but guys couldn't. I remember one time, like we had a couple of girls that were in the same position. Oh, 
My boyfriend is 19. My mm. boyfriend is 22. And yeah, she's like, you're 17. You're 16. 15. My boyfriend is 23. And then one guy tried it once. Oh, my girlfriend, she's 22. Nah. Yeah, that didn't happen. <laughs> nah. Not you. You, you, you Not wanna, you. You want to hear something fucked up? That was me. Because I lost my virginity at 17 to one of 27 year old. She's like 27, 28, one of those ages. She had at least eight or nine years on me. Um, but Abba, that's that's trauma right there. So oh, again, oh. this is this is what jail. I'm, for me, it wasn't traumatic. Is it illegal? Uh, I don't think it is in Canada, so no, I'm good. Not, but think. beyond whether or not it's criminal or not, for me, it wasn't a bad thing. But I would not use me as a barometer for everyone else. The same way someone else can go through the exact same experience, the exact same age difference, and they could have a really bad experience depending on how. So that's what I'm trying to say. I'm also speaking partially from personal experience, but I think it just really depends on the people involved. You never want to open up about your trauma, and you really should. What do you mean? You have trauma. About, like, the older lady? Yeah. She definitely traumatized my dick. That's flashback. That's not trauma. No? No. I'm proud. Did I ever tell you what happened? <laughs> yeah. I did. did. Yeah, I didn't even know anything about sex or nothing. I was like, now, look, I ain't saying that shit is good. <laughs> But I am saying she did a good job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Bro, this girl went down. That shit was crazy. Yeah. And then the, 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 I, just, I, just, sucked, I just busted. She, she, she sucked the sheets through your ass. <laughs> I don't think I said that. You know, you know when you cramp up your, you cramp up your ass like that? Oh, yeah. And you get up to go yeah. to the washroom and then you're... <laughs> no, I was standing when it happened. And I just busted randomly like a surprise. And she's like, why didn't you tell me? And I was like, why didn't you tell me? I didn't know this was going to happen. <laughs> you the one doing it. <laughs> You're the bro. Yeah, you're the one who's just doing your thing. You, you was working the machine. I just you? got here. Yeah. Imagine if I lost my first time to somebody my age. She don't know what the hell she doing. She biting and using teeth and shit. I think people can have different experiences with it. So um, I think that pretty much kind of summarizes my thoughts on this. Um, I don't think Cody Ko's going to respond to this. I don't think he should, legally speaking. I know the fans want it. But to be honest with you, um, it's not about what the fans want or think. It, it really is irrelevant because at the end of the day, the only person he potentially hurt was the other party, which is Tana. And he needs to handle that apology with her. There's something that happened in private, so they should handle it privately. And I think they should have that conversation. If he wants to do a public apology thing, he can. I think it's a stupid move and I wouldn't recommend it. But I'm no sure boy. for everyone watching, they want they want answers, so they're demanding it. But he doesn't owe you guys anything. I think he owes Tana something. And that's all that matters. Yeah. Any other thoughts you have about age gaps or? No. Yeah, I don't think it's illegal in Canada. It's not. It's yeah, because Zerka, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Even consent in the way we understand it today is so drastically different. different than the way we understood it just seven years ago. A hundred percent. And like, people can say whatever they want about like the I as well era and all the allegations that came out of that. Uh, but for me, it was actually really cool learning experiences because I learned especially when I immigrated back from Africa, but nobody talked about consent in the way I understand it now and over the last two to three years. And so it was a very mm -hmm. informative period for me because um, a lot of things I thought were normal, which, but we don't, we don't have, we didn't have the information today that we had back then or vice versa. You know what I meant? Mm -hmm. um, and it's important to keep that in mind when people are like, well, they should have known better in 2010. I promise you they shouldn't. Because that shit was not normalized, and these kinds of conversations are not normalized. And I find it even because I generally date people closer to my age, and I have conversations with them, and they still have a lot of the old programming. They oh. don't talk about consent. They don't talk about a lot of to topics. They don't talk about testing a lot of the times. It's very minimalistic. And it's especially true when you leave America and you go elsewhere. They don't talk about these topics whatsoever. Uh, and so wherever the online zeitgeist is in regards to consent and age uh, that's appropriate, the rest of the world isn't even close to you guys. Uh, and that's been generally my experience. Your thoughts? No. I mean, you run a podcast on this shit, bro. On what? Consent? and everything and we we we, we sometimes we disagree we often disagree oh we're talking about because my 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 co-host is much more on the left than i am uh -huh. much more uh -huh. and sometimes we disagree on stuff we put it on camera and that's okay but even the whole thing sometimes i think is delusion like i'm not maybe it's just music as well that is not in in the dating scene and stuff like that but asking every steps of everything is i don't i don't Wait, explain what you mean 
can I kiss you on the neck? Can I kiss you there? Can I take off my shirt? Yeah. Can you I take your shirt? Can I unzip my pants? Can I? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And maybe it's me that's too old or in the old ways or whatever or not. Like once it's on, it's on. But if you tell me that, yo, it's not anymore, then it's not. It's not a big deal. I would like just pack up my shit and be like, yeah. So you want to watch a movie? Cool. You want me to get the fuck out? All right. Like I, I don't know, man. Sometimes it really feels you. You, you talk to them, and then it feels way more complicated than it really is. It's like, I think online people do a lot of yapping. A lot yeah. of yapping about what they would do, what they find creepy, what they would never do. And in my experience, people get in person and they act completely opposite. A hundred percent. You know, people say, like, I would never date a blonde. And all of a sudden, as soon as a blonde shows interest, they're all on top of it. People saying, like, oh, I love inform. I, I remember this. This is one of my most distinct memories. I remember being at a university campus and this lady was running a consent workshop and I was just listening in. We ended up sleeping together, like, maybe a month or two later didn't do a single goddamn thing she taught in that class not one not a single one it was so jarring to me that she taught this long lengthy ass class and yapped about it online all the time yep. and in person she didn't do yep. none of that shit all the people that, that yap a lot sometimes i'm gonna look at you like no you know what beyond closed orders you're the perpetrator all right well that's it for today's video